see what's going on in your store. If it is parallel to your building, you're driving along, you've got four seconds, and you have to take your eye off the road to read what that signage is. And if you are a pedestrian, you actually have to step out into the street to see what that, that shop is. And they said, probably on Main Street, that's not a good idea to back out into traffic. Um, and but our, we have a major, major problem in, the, in this area. The other is, you, you can't tell, but this curved road over here in the lower right is the, the drive into Greenhorn Creek. Um, and over on the, in the woods, there's a little sign that says that there's a park here. And again, it's parallel to the road, it's in the bushes, you can't see it. If it were perpendicular to the road, the signage on both sides, you spot it right away. And uh, so there's, they say that it's been shown that the signage should be no lower than seven feet off the sidewalk, no higher than nine, and about 42 inches wide is maximum. And your signage should not just say Crisco's, use an example, it should say Crisco's Restaurante because as people are walking down, they don't know what Cruise Codes is. We do, but the visitors don't. So you want to not just say, I don't know, Brown and Sons. You want to say Brown and Sons homemade furniture or jewelry or whatever it is so that as they move down the street, they can see it. And also vehicular traffic can see it. So we had some more pictures of signs here in Angel's Camp. Um, to the next slide. Um, and Pat, yes? Yes. On your side, is it no lower than seven feet, no higher than nine? In or? Well, but almost all parallel to the there. street. No. Is, is um, 
prove it. He didn't give the, um, they actually did a mock-up of how um, Gold Country Inn could put those words and everything on a nice sign below Gold Country Inn, make it look organized, make, give it some curb appeal, make it look like, oh, that's a nice place to stay. Okay, next one, next signage. Um, now, they said the Historic Angels Camp parking sign, it has a bit of the history and that sort of thing, but right across the street is Paulson's, which tells you what it does because it's got the beer, the cocktails, and the pool, uh, the pool stick, but it isn't in keeping with the historic area. They also mentioned, and you can't see it, that it would be a good idea if we kept our streets clean, that it's the pride that we take in our own front of our buildings um, and uh, keeping things cleaned up that um, are really what uh, you know demonstrates to other people and creates that curve of view. Now, um, next one is another rule, which is about critical mass. And he has a rule called the 10-10-10 rule. And that is that within a three block area of your primary shopping area, your pri primary destination in your town, you should have 10 places that sell food, that provide food. Yeah. Ten, yeah. 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 Ten places, um, let's see, I can't remember right here. Uh, what? This, no, this so um, ten, ten retail shops, and then ten places that are open after 6 p.m. Okay, now they said that doesn't mean that a restaurant couldn't have music in the evening, and therefore count as one of each. But it's the 10-10-10 rule in a three block area that you must have in order to grab and keep your tourists. And because the longer they stay, and it's the ones who stay on the ground in the evening that spend the most money, and they, and, they, and they stay around. So again, we need to think about that in terms of um, critical mass for Angel's Camp. And that, again, would be something that an economic development committee and the branding committee would begin to work on. Some other notes and first impressions, and we are coming to the end, but these are fun. They, they were very impressed with the Oldenville School. However, what does the Oldenville School say? It just says it's taken care of by the County Historical Society. It doesn't sell you on why you should come in, or it doesn't tell you that it was the first school in the county or whatever. And then you go in, and of course, People want experiential, you know, they want experience um, and uh, as part of their, their travel. And you walk in and you can't go into the school, you can only look in through the glass. So it's, you know, we keep you out. And then here's this blank lobby, and th this is a wonderful place because this is the first thing people see when they come into, well, not the first thing they see, but this is the first tourist thing they see when they come into Angel's Camp. And we could have we could have kiosks to sell the other things about Angels Camp. We could have a map of Angels Camp. We could have all kinds of things there that actually cross sell and bring people further into town. So that's that's an underused facility that's soon going to come in under the city and the and the museum commission. So hopefully we will take some of these suggestions to heart. The next area is no, that's the where. That, the, the empty lobby is the inside of the automobile school. So you can walk into the, the lobby and then they have glass to cover the, so that you can't go into the school. Um, they had some more suggestions and one was, the, of course, the Angels Camp Museum um, as that, that people want, they want the sense of history. They want to be able to touch things. They want to know the story behind things. They really don't care who donated them. <laughs> Unless they are from the Donies, Doni, Donies family. Um, and uh, they need to tell a story. And they don't want just artifacts. Anybody can have a whole collection of artifacts. So they've made some recommendations in terms of that. They also suggest that we get our opening hours, that this, this town is closed more than it's open, and most of the shops are closed more than they're open. And of course, they came in the middle of the week and it, that was during the winter, and the museum was closed with a big close sign on it. Um, so they, they, that was one. Another suggestion um, was to make, uh, which is the next slide, is again talking about the museum, 
is tell the story about these things, make them accessible, and you'll see that right now um, some of these recommendations are happening because they're changing the landscaping in front of the museum, and we are working on that. Um, they had, the, the next one is the Memorial Garden. There is no explanation as to why it's a Memorial Garden. So they were left to wonder who's buried there. Are, are there former city officials? I mean, you know, are there Desperados? Who's buried there? Is anybody buried there? Then there's no explanation of what those things are hanging on the wire, these tufas. And they thought, are these bullet holes? Is that why this is a Memorial Garden? This is down below the main building on the, on the uh, museum complex. They also thought there should be more signage down there. Then they thought that the little church was so was so wonderful, but there's nothing really out there that tells you much about it. Who built it? When did they build it? Why did they build it? How many people were here at the time? What's, what's, what's its history? And they'd like to see more of that. Next one. See, we, they were very ecumenical in their, <laughs> their, um, their, their look at Angel's Camp. They, they, were, they really thought that the Visitor's Bureau was a lovely building, um, very good uh, uh, things inside, very helpful staff. They loved the porch where people could sit out. They liked to just see it. There's a sort of a circle over in the lower left-hand corner where any 24 hours a day you can pick up materials. But they said this sign is actually almost useless because, again, it's sitting in a slant. Um, it's almost parallel to the road. Uh, it's not two-sided. And it's under the trees, and you're on top of it before you even see it. And then try to turn around on Main Street and come back and just keep on going. Right? So they suggested something on the signs. They also said on the side, the toilets are great. Um, and uh, but they would, would suggest that they get rid of the newspaper stands and actually fix something up there that has uh, a kiosk and more information, maybe even a map about Angel's Camp and where you can go. And then the next slide shows some of the things that people have done uh, with the 24-hour information thing, and there's, there, it's covered. And you see that actually in Carmel. Those of you who've been down there on the street corners, they have these boxes with all these brochures and newspapers and magazines in, all very neat. Um, the other suggestion they had was that people like to walk. If they get in their car, you have a tendency to lose them. They'll just keep on going. They really like to walk. And we have all these broken segments of pavement, no pavement, that sort of thing. The recommendation is we get that filled in. Make it easy for the people who are staying in the motels up in the middle part of town to get down to downtown. Make it easy for people to get to the park. Um, and so this is this is a picture of some of our broken sidewalk. And they said it's very intimidating. I mean, we're used to it, but it's very intimidating for a first time traveler. Um, they gave high marks to um, Best Western, Cedar Inn, um, and again, they're showing more of these areas where we really need sidewalks, we need help, and again, good signage for pedestrians. Um, they went out to Greenhorn Creek, and uh, but Greenhorn Creek doesn't tell them what Greenhorn Creek is. Um, and so they weren't sure, but they were told they should go out to Greenhorn Creek. <laughs> They were very pleased with the signage when they got here, um, but they think there could be more in terms of telling you what it is. And um, <clears throat> the other the suggestion they had was that this is historic town, and we use these uh, cartoon frogs on our street signs that they said really doesn't say quality, doesn't say character, and doesn't say uh, history. And as we were looking at our signage and that sort of thing, we felt that this is another area. All this has to work. It all works together. And if you think back to towns that you visited where it all works together, you really like to be there and you remember it. Uh, and so it's creating the experience. And um, a little bit more. Um, they said that um, there um, that there are a lot of this signage, really, and we need to develop a character, but we're all over the place in Angel's Camp. We're modern, we're old-fashioned, um, we're Western, we're frogs, we're everything, 
And again, that's something that they're going to be helping us with. By helping to create this ambiance in the downtown will be really, really important. Next one, um, they said, again, um, there, these were some of their experiences. They said, uh, they, it happened to be right after the parade when they were here, and Suze was still decorating downtown. Um, they said that probably, while it was interesting and caught their eye, doesn't create quality. Uh, and doesn't say much about quality on, on Main Street. They like this sign uh, on the, the Copper Proper sign, which of course isn't there anymore. Um, they, they went up to Twisted Oak and they loved the visit to Twisted Oak Winery. But they said the signage looks like some temporary thing and it really doesn't pull you off the road. Um, and that it's, it's far nicer um, venue than what it looks like um, from, the, from the road. The next slide will show you they went, oh, great, there's an artist colony. Let's go up and see. When they got up there, there was nothing that told them where to go. There was this great big stop sign. They couldn't tell whether artists just lived there or whether they were working there or anything. And they said, these are the kinds of things that really turn people off when you are led to believe, and plus the fact that the sign is just white on black, and certainly isn't very indicative of very creative artists living up there. Um, so, but you know, if all you have to go on is first impressions, you know, we know what's there, but, uh, that, but visitors do not. Um, the next thing that they, uh, they talked about was uh, frog towns, too bad the Ray's not here. But uh, they went out there, um, they found it hard to get around, uh, there are signs going, you know, arrows going everywhere, and it didn't tell you what Frogtown is. Is this a museum? Is this a natural history museum? Do they have frogs there? What, what's going on out there? And it's very hard for them to figure out. And uh, so they, they um, recommended, they thought that the gate and that sort of thing created, um, the, I think that's the next slide, um, and then um, certainly on the way out, they have lots of signs that says, come back again. So uh -huh. that was an excellent place for them to put a nice list of, you know, make things look classy, but a nice list of upcoming events so you'll know when to come back because it was empty when they went there that day. Um, so there, there are all kinds, they've made a number of recommendations on things that you could do, um, that we could do, to make Angel's Camp more inviting and to sell. Um, I think that probably, um, I won't go in, it's only a few more slides and I won't go into it, but basically what they've done is they're showing, well take, take the next one, Kim, here. This is a booklet that they put together, they said think like a shopping mall where you're trying to you know, sell your best you know, you always have anchor tenants that bring in the most shoppers and then they stop and they do the other little things. And uh, um, this was put together by a town that took their best of, the best, first, the best uh, mark or deli and the best restaurant for this and the best dar, bar and put them all together. And they've seen business really go gangbusters because it looks great. And what they've done is they zeroed in on their key, their best, and then the others all benefit from that. Another one they showed, uh, which is uh, two more slides, which says this one. This was done by a private individual that put together the 101 things to do in Door County. And you can see the nice look, and you know, take of this and do that. And he is now in like his fifth or sixth printing, um, and it has just been a huge seller, but actually it has brought this increased tourism many, many times over, just having something that is uh, special in that way. And then, I think this one's important, is um, never send customers away, invite them back. And he has lots of um, slides of um, we're closed, we're closed, we're closed, we're closed, we're closed. Tell them when you're going to be open. If you're closed, does that mean you're out of business? You're closed for 10 minutes, you're closed for an hour, you're closed for the week, you're closed for the month, it doesn't, they can't tell. And, but to tell, tell you when, they're, when you're coming back and when you're open. The, ne the next uh, slide shows a few more, and, um, uh, but most of them were closed in town. And finally, 
The last thing in our recommendation, and this first one, or re not recommendation, suggestion, is that it's really important to create gathering places downtown and to animate them. And, and they suggested that as quickly as we can, we pass, pass an ordinance about um, billboards in Main Street, but uh, that this was a very underused area and also did not speak well uh, of Angel's Camp, where other towns have even taken a few parking spaces on Main Street and created this little bay for people to be able to sit in or to eat in and that sort of thing, um, to create that, um, that, that ambiance and to get people to rest and relax, to let the husband rest while the wife is shopping or the other way around. Um, and another thing they were talking about is even creating places where people can sit outside because if they're walking around with food or drink and you don't want them in the store, then let them sit in front of the store and finish the food and drink rather than walking away and going somewhere else. So that's basically it. Um, that was their assessment of Angel's Camp with some suggestions. The next stage, I believe, is that they will come back with some recommendations. This still doesn't deal with the issue of what's the lure of Angel's Camp. Um, and it, what's our brand going to be? And that is all going to be coming from them with recommendations and a lot of community input. And again, we are good, I'll be happy to answer questions if I can. Um, I will say that they have it's just an eight-page booklet called The Art of Branding. And if you want, would like a copy of this, which gives you their 35 rules or 25 rules of, of branding, um, we'll be glad to send this to you by email if you leave me your email address, and we'll get that out to you this week. Um, and, um, uh, and also, we certainly would love to have some volunteers to be on the board of the steering committee. And with that, I'll take your questions. Dixon, who interviewed a number of people here in town, were flying back in uh, for, I guess, about four or five hours. And they, we were hoping to have a meeting with them, with the people who attended, either were interviewed by them or attended the February 6th. And they were going to rehash some things, seek some opinions, and also talk a bit about what the Branding Steering Committee, Branding Development Committee, uh, would do. Roger was caught when the American Airlines shut down, so uh, he didn't make it. And I don't know when that's going to be rescheduled. But I know they're coming back to the city council sometime with recommend with I don't know whether it's suggestions or recommendations, but they certainly haven't had any input from their suggestions. to see yourself as others see you. 
and, um, and then begin to think about the fact that there are things that we can do. And we don't want everybody running out and suddenly starting putting up new signs and things. Let's wait till we know what we're, what's our lure? What's, what are we going to coalesce around? What's going to be that hook that's going to pull people in? And then how do we build that experience throughout the community? And is it Ken? Yes. Well, I was wondering what, what format the input to DEI is going to be. That meetings and questionnaires or website. Uh, how does this meeting fit in? Well, they had this. Uh, the Monica Dixon came down and I don't know interviewed 20 or 30 members within the, the community, and then they came back with this report. Plus, it was a three-hour presentation. Um, on February the 6th, and I'm not sure. Tim, do you know what the next step is and when they're coming back? Uh, not, they will be coming back to the city council to make their presentation, but we have to Okay. So we'll, we'll, as best we can, and, um, keep people involved in what's when that's happening. Yeah, follow-up question. Is, is there an email list we can get on to be sure to be notified of all these steps as they happen? Sure. Just give us your email address. We're trying to get it out to members and we're increasing our email to, to businesses also. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, what is the most appropriate way for um, people in the community to contact whomever if they have an idea regarding what they think the branding should be? Uh, you want to send that to Doc? Monica at destinationdevelopment.com. Doc Monica is D is a dog O C. Monica at destinationdevelopment.com. And one one of the things that I'll just throw out because I know that we are all ready to frogs, um, and but. They, they, one of the things that they mentioned is that the frogs really go with Calaveras County because it's the celebrated jumping frog in Calaveras County, not an angel's camp. Um, another thing they mentioned is that most um, children in elementary school do not read Mark Twain and they don't read these stories anymore, so they have actually no idea. Um, they have what, what the <laughs> celebrated jumping frog is. They have some very interesting uh, material in the back of this from their secret shoppers who were told to go on websites and look for information. The Angels Camp information, except as it applies to the Visitors Bureau, GoCalHarris.com, when they come into just Angels Camp or the city, is dreadful. And a lot of times the links don't work and everything. So that that is the number one thing that you do. But again, we want it to be reflective of the experience and the, the lore and everything. And that's to be continued. So it's frustrating, but it'll take time. This is a three to 10 year program. Any other questions? Oh, Bob. <laughs> yes. Yes, and they, they were, they did talk about that. That, of course, you know what they're going to say. Where can we eat around here? What's the, what's the answer? Go to Murphy's. So no one says, you know, I know they're in strip malls, but there's actually a really nice Chinese restaurant, a Mexican restaurant, or have you tried this or that or the other thing. They had experience when they came the first time. Um, they stopped somebody right at 5 o'clock, and it was on a Thursday. And they said, uh, you know, where can I eat? And there was no attempt to tell them about what was in town. They just told them to go to Murphy's. And they said, no, we're sorry, we're closing, as opposed to can we help you. Um, there's very little cross-selling, cross-marketing. So if you go into a restaurant as a visitor, someone doesn't say, oh, I see you. Are you new in town? Are you visiting? You know, and have you been over to see the museum? And you really should go. You know, we have all these great caverns and mines around here. We thought about these tours and that sort of stuff. And um, they they don't, uh, they, there's none of this cross-selling. So they go to the museum. Unless they ask specifically, they probably aren't recommended to go downtown and all that. Any other questions? Well, I've kept you very long. Thank you very much. And please sign up to be on the committee. <laughs> Thank you.